Hello, folks. My name is James Bach. I'm trying to hold my head in a certain way so that my glasses don't reflect all my screen light back at you. Um, I'm here to talk about a certain test technique with automation, but it's not the automation that you're thinking about. See, most automation is what I call user simulation automation. User simulation means that the automation tries to use the product the way a user does, as if it's a fake user, clicking on the buttons, putting in the data, all that. But there's lots of other kinds of automation that we can think about. And one of my favorites is automation, which automatically creates test data that we can put into the product and then we can, we can interact with the product the way a user would as a human. We can experience the product, but now we're working with really interesting complex data instead of just simplistic ABC123 kind of data. So let me give you an example of that with this product called CryptPad Kanban. As you see, I can do this. I can say, create a new Kanban board. Now this CryptPad Kanban stuff is, is pretty interesting. Uh, let's see, <laughs> assuming it will load. There we go, it's loaded. Okay, so it, this is the default board and it works just like a Kanban board does. You can move items around on it. We'll make little to-do items. Um, so, you know, that's the uh, that's what it does. I can go back to the beginning here. There it is, just as it was. So, when I first was trying to test this, I was thinking, how can I use tools to test this better? And of course, I thought maybe Selenium can move these things around for me, or I can create things in Selenium. So I'm thinking of that, but uh, I wanted to do something where I created a really complicated board and then I got to interact with it instead of having to create that board by hand. So I'm looking at this and I open this menu and I see, oh, you can do an export. And when you do an export and uh, click okay, it comes out as a JSON. Well, this is what that JSON looks like. Here it is in, uh, in visual code. This uh, JSON data structure is exactly the, the default board just in JSON form. And I thought, well, why don't I just write a little program that creates one of these? So what I'll do is I will, I'll add items to this and I'll add content to this and I'll make it bold and I'll put links in and I'll do all kinds of things and I'll put tags in and um, set colors. And so I'll do that with some items. I'll export it. I'll see what the format looks like. And then I'll write a program that will create all that. And that's what I did. The program ended up looking like this. I wrote it in Perl. Yes. I wrote this program and I produced this. This is a very large file. This uh, has got uh, 4,400 lines in it. This is five columns with uh, 50 items each. So it's not that big of a Kanban board, but it's somewhat sizable. So then I take that and I import it. Well, let's see what it looks like when I import it. Import. And we're gonna import this one right here, go. Takes a few seconds, takes, well, less than five seconds. And here we go. This is what it looks like. Now look how interestingly complicated this is. I can do lots of stuff. This is a tester playground. Now I want you to notice that it's not just coding to create a Kanban board. What I'm doing when I wrote that code, what I was doing 
is thinking, how can I cover this product well? How can I feature its features? I want to touch as many features as I can. So I made sure I put tags in. I made sure I put colors in. I made sure I put lots of different formatting in. I randomized text. In some cases, I randomized the uh, names. So that's one thing, but I didn't just randomize things. I tried to make this self-referential. So one of the techniques I'm, I'm offering here is data generation as a test technique, but more specifically, self-referential data. So if you notice here, look at the, uh, uh, the columns, the columns are numbered, and then everything in the column is numbered too, 10, 12, 13. So this is the original ordering and each column have been put in. But also because this thing does filtering by tag, look at these tags. I can filter by board one because I've tagged everything on board one to have a board one tag. And I can tag by board three. And so, this is just automatically allowing me to test the filtering capability of this product. Using this technique, I found a bug in about five seconds. I was showing this to another tester and I clicked on this tag to tag things as bold. And look right here. This is a perfect example. Where's the bold? It's supposed to be bold. There's nothing bolded in here. If I edit it and say, where is the bold? Well, you see, this is where the bold was supposed to be. It was supposed to be right there. This is formatted as bold, but it's not bold, but I'm not finished testing this. But now I can use that data file for regression testing and do rich regression testing pretty quickly, richer than I would otherwise be able to do if I hadn't created this tool. So that's a way to think about using tools going forward. Think about data coverage and you're gonna find lots more bugs than if you just think about little test cases. That's my video. Good luck and happy testing.